News Talk is online. News Talk Online, a production of PalTalk.com, syndicated by our friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, archived on Blip TV and YouTube and GaryBombgarten.com. And my second reminder, uh, my second daily reminder to go to the PalTalk News Network website, which resides at ReporterGary.com. ReporterGary.com. Go early, go often, like voting in Chicago, because we're updating it all the time for stories that you may or may not see here, read in the mainstream media. And the more often you comment, the more likely it is that your name will be pulled out of the hopper to receive a free green nick on Pal Talk. If you already have a green nick, you can gift it to somebody else. Let's go to Eric in Brooklyn. Eric, welcome to News Talk Online on the Pal Talk News Network. Hey, Gary. Hey, Dr. Rushnak. It's uh, good to be here. I, I was curious about something. Maybe uh, to help us understand where the benefit to government-run uh, health care would come to, Perhaps if you could explain the difference between an American patient being treated in terms of price-wise for like their drugs and someone in say Amsterdam or Britain or Canada. Um, let's say the condition is diabetes which runs in my family. So a person who's diabetic needs to get health care. What would be the difference in costs in being treated in the United States and or in the European countries where health care is controlled by the government? Uh, thank you for letting me ask my question. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what, what the cost is in Europe, but certainly it's pretty high in the United States. And, and again, because we don't negotiate drug prices with pharmaceutical companies. Uh, I know in Europe they have a group called NICE, N-I-C-E, called the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, N-I-C-E. And people say that NICE is not so nice, but I think they're... They, it's the right step. It's healthcare professionals and it's actually uh, scientists who are actually negotiating with drug companies based upon how well different drugs work. Now, the fact of the matter is not all drugs are equally safe. The fact of the matter is not all drugs are equally effective. And the fact of the matter is all drugs are not equally uh, the same uh, cost. So therefore, why wouldn't uh, we have a system in the U.S. like the, exists in Europe where a group called the National Clinical Excellence uh, Group Institute uh, of Doctors uh, negotiates drug prices and says to the drug company, prove to me that your drug is safer and as effective as a cheaper drug. Uh, in the United States, by the way, FDA, we, we, we approve drugs a drug compared to placebo. So we're not comparing apples and apples, we're comparing apples and oranges. So there's a lot of drugs in America that the drug company sets the price, it's way high, there's no competition, there's no ability to negotiate. Uh, we, we need to have that ability to negotiate. We also need to take uh, the TV ads off because usually one of the things that the lawyers now on television make the drug company say is one of the side effects is uh, you, might, you might have a sore throat, you might have a coffee, you might have a death. Oh, oh, wait, did he say death? Yes, he did. He said death because death is a possible side effect of these drugs. So therefore, a lot of doctors now finding themselves um, uh, patients demanding, pounding the table. I saw that pill on TV. I want it. I don't care what it costs. It, it looked great in that commercial. Of course, they're actors on TV. Medicine is life and death. I spent my entire career on health care. Uh, this, is, this is not something that patients need to be telling the doctors what to do, and it's certainly not what the politicians should not be telling the doctors and nurses what to do. I would think that that, that we should be making those type decisions, and, and, and it should be focused on what's right for the patient. It should not be focused on what's right to make more money for all the special interest. And I know we have a lot of you know, for-profit pharmaceutical companies, for-profit insurance companies who are making billions of dollars. We have doctors who are committing fraud. We, it was on 60 Minutes, uh, $60 billion in, in defrauding the Medicare by submitting bills uh, that, 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 were, that were completely fraudulent. 
Um, and when asked by Leslie Stahl, uh, why is this going on? Uh, the person in, in, in Medicare says, well, we don't have enough staff to watch all the fraud. And, and Leslie said, you can hire a lot of staff for, a, for, for $60 billion. My goodness, we need to be proactive. So again, we need to do so much. People need to come together, need to come together. And, and you're right, somebody right, are doctors crooks too. Yeah, there, there are, there, there's some bad apples amongst doctors. The only group that I really think are saints are nurses. I think nurses are clearly saints and, and they do the right thing. But yeah, they're, they're, there's a good 20% of doctors who are bad apples and we, and we need to corral them. Uh, we, need to, we need to make sure that we have honest people, but we have to have a conversation and that's what Americans for Healthcare does is talk to people, listen to people, and hopefully one day we're going to have massive numbers of people appear in Washington, D.C., and Congress will hopefully invite us in because the media will say, I wonder why you have all these uh, millions of people out there. And maybe they got, they got something going here. That's what we need to do. Martin Luther King showed the way. We can do it in healthcare. I think doctors are great. A lot of them, a lot of them not so great. The doctors who volunteer their time, that's super the doctors that prescribe expensive medications and don't look for a lesser expense drug, that's not good because doctors know what drugs cost. And when they give you a drug, the first question you should say to them, is this drug that much superior in treating my diabetes that it's worth that cost, doctor? And if he says, well, I'm not sure, then, then you've already started that conversation. Doctors and patients need to be on the same page. They need to be the doctor needs to be the patient advocate, but the patient needs to be an informed consumer. Don't just believe anything anybody tells you. Ask questions. Well, and and, and uh, hopefully you have somebody to advocate for you if uh, you are incapacitated. The 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 side effect that I get blown away by when I hear the commercials all the time are uh, for medications that fight depression, but the side effect is suicide. Interesting side effect for a medication that is supposed to control one's depression. There we go. Okay, let's go to Shira, who's joining us from Illinois. Shira, welcome to News Talk Online on the Pal Talk News Network. I, I want to ask Dr. Ratner one real quick question. Um, there is a doctor here in Illinois, because of the health care issue and because of the insurance problems, once a month he gives free health care, and I mean it's absolutely free. Once a month he allows people to come to his office and he sees them for free and treats them. And if he has extra medicines given to him by the pharmaceutical companies, he will also give them medicine that they need if he has it on hand. Um, I'm not saying that all doctors should do that, but do you think that if more doctors did that, that that would help some until they're able to fix the health care situation. That's it. That's, That's all I got to say. Excellent question. Uh, thank Michael you for that Martin question. Is. Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm a volunteer for Americans for Health Care. We, we are all volunteers. Um, we believe we're passionate about this issue. Uh, over the years, I've taken care of, of many patients pro bono. Um, and I think there's many doctor groups, doctors without borders, doctors who volunteer for free clinics across America who provide those services. However, you know, there's still too many people, millions that fall between the cracks that, that don't have access. And that's what we, we need to solve. This is very solvable, by the way. We, we spend more money in America, $2.7 trillion a year on health care. We have 60 million people uninsured. And everybody thinks, well, you go to the hospital, even if you don't have insurance, and, you're, and, and everything is hunky-dory and you're fine. That's not true. 
what the hospital's responsibility is only to get you over the acute problem and then they discharge you. So let's just say you come in a diabetic ketoacidosis and your and your blood sugar is 1000 and you're in a coma. Well, they will certainly get you out of the coma, but then once you uh, get discharged from the hospital, you have no care unless you can pay for it out of pocket to see a doctor for diabetes medicine. And then guess what happens then? You end up right back in the hospital, another, another diabetic coma, and the taxpayers pay for that. The whole system is misaligned, it's totally wrong. There's plenty of money in the system to cover every man, woman, and child. America ranks 19th, dead last amongst the, the top 19 industrialized countries in wellness and prevention. We have in America what I view as a sickness system. It's not a health system. We have world-class sickness care for those that can afford insurance. And as the other speakers were saying, healthcare is going up so much, the cost that, that pretty soon you're gonna to need to be extremely wealthy because the employers are not gonna be able to afford it and remain competitive globally. As far as job killing, this is a job adding if you let Dr. Rushnak and about 10 of the nurses form a healthcare system. And I'll tell you what I mean. We need healthcare coaches in America. We need nurses to talk to patients to, 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 to improve their health, to do the personal things like losing weight and exercising and taking their medications. 50% of people in America, by the way, who get a medication from a, from a doctor, don't take the drug regularly as prescribed. A lot of them don't even fill the prescription because they don't believe the doctor that they needed it, and maybe they're right. And by the way, there's plenty of blame to go around, my last comment that it's not just the insurance companies. We have big corporations that are basically hiding behind the insurance companies and they're paying the bills. And we have pharmaceutical companies uh, that, that are certainly charging a ton of money and advertising on television. By the way, the only two countries in the world that, that allow direct-to-consumer advertising on television is New Zealand and the USA. The only two countries in the world where the government does not have the right, and, and we negotiated it away, I might add, the, the government does not have a right to negotiate drug prices. Drug prices in America are unbelievably high. That's why people go over the border to Canada. They even fly to Europe to get the same drug, and they find that it's cheaper by taking the flight across, take a vacation, and still save money. America is not where we need to be. It's not pa patient-centered. It's politicized. The special interests have taken over. Well, and you know, when you hear uh, people like uh, Ellen Ratner uh, speak about her situation because she has to pay for her own health care, and once they recognize, when she was diagnosed with something, uh, they increased her premiums to $1,600 a month. Uh, it, 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 it really brings it into focus. And I was speaking with an individual earlier today who cannot afford the $1,600 a month but had, has a catastrophic uh, condition that caused for her to have to undergo surgery, actually a series of surgeries, uh, without which she would have died. Now, she just completed surgery, and uh, there, is, there is an issue of tending to the wound, which happens to be in a part of the body where she cannot change the dressing herself. It's inaccessible to, to the patient. And yet, because she does not have health insurance, she does not qualify for home care, so there's, and she lives alone, and there is nobody to change her dressing for her. I'm out of time, uh, but uh, Dr. Rushnak's going to take two hours off, and we'll be back at 8 o'clock New York time for his show, Americans for Healthcare, right here on the Pal Talk News Network. Those of you in queue, don't go away, uh, because the aftermath is up in about 60 seconds. And at 7 o'clock New York time, it's Sal Lockman with America's Works. I'll be back at 5 o'clock New York time tomorrow for another edition of News Talk Online on the Pal Talk News Network. Until then, peace out.